Basic Misconceptions of Science The cardinal error of science lies in shutting the Creator out of the Creator's creation. This one basic error topples the whole structure, for out of it all of the other misconceptions of light, matter, energy, electricity, magnetism, and atomic structure have grown. If science knew what light actually is, instead of the waves and corpuscles of incandescent suns, which science now thinks it is, a new civilization would arise from that one fact alone. Light is not waves which travel at 186,000 miles per second, which science says it is, nor does light travel at all. The light of incandescent suns is but an effect of one of the two equally opposed electrical pr pressure conditions which interweave this universe into visible solids and liquids surrounded by invisible gases of space. These two opposite electrical conditions which form the basis of the constitution of matter are the compressed condition of gravity pressure and the expanded condition of radiation pressure. These two electric conditions are the equal and opposite pressures which make motion imperative and without which motion is impossible. The positive electric condition compresses large volumes of light waves into small volumes by winding them up centripetally into spiral vortices by thrusting inward from without. That is what gravitation is. The negative electric condition expands small volumes of light waves into large volumes by underwinding them centrifugally into voiding equators where matter disappears. That is what radiation is. Radiation thrusts outwardly from within to depolarize matter and void motion. The light of suns and the dark space are but two opposite conditions of the same thing. They interchange constantly. Each becomes the other sequentially. Science excluded the Creator for, from its consideration because of the supposition that the Creator could not be proven to exist by laboratory methods. This decision is unfortunate, for God is provable by laboratory methods. The locatable motionless light, which man mistakenly calls magnetism, is the invisible but familiar light which God is. And with it, he controls his universe, as we shall see. Misconception of Electromagnetism The Einstein theory of the constitution of matter conceives the universe to be one great ocean of electromagnetism out of which and into which flow the streams of gravitation, matter, and energy. Radiation, the equal and opposite mate of gravitation, without which gravitation is impossible, is entirely ignored in this fantastic and unnatural concept. Equally fantastic is the claim of this theory that it is possible to have gravitation without matter, and for space to exist without gravity or without matter. The weak point in this strange theory is the fact that electromagnetism is not an existent force in nature, nor are there electromagnetic fields or magnetic fields. Wave fields are electric, exclusively electric. Electricity is the only force which God makes use of to create the universe, and the only two tools God makes use of for creating. His universe of matter and motion are two pairs of opposed spiral vortices. One of these opposite pairs meets at apices at wave amplitudes to create spheres of matter, and the other opposed pair meets at the cone bases upon wave axes to, make, to void both matter and motion. See figures 129 and 130 on page 162 in A New Concept of the Universe by Walter Russell. These two pairs of opposed electric spiral vortices are the basic units which construct all matter. Together they form the electric waves of motion which create the various pressure conditions which are needed to produce the many seemingly different elements of visible and invisible matter. Electricity is divided into two equal and opposite forces which thrust away from each other to build the polarized universe. When inability to thrust away from each other takes its sequential turn in the pulse of the universal heartbeat, depolarization voids all opposition. Thus, the universe consists of cycles of life followed by death, growth followed by decay, and generation followed by radiation, each expressed simultaneously and repeated sequentially forever without end. That which science calls magnetism 
and believes to be a force which has the power of lifting tons of steel is God's still light, which balances and controls the equality of electric division, that electricity alone performs all of the work of this universe. The magnetic lines which control the universal balance performs no work whatsoever. A bar magnet picks up nails because of the electric current which divided that steel into its activated polarized conditions, and not because of its focal poles of stillness which center its two activities. Even though the electric current has been withdrawn, the steel retains its electric activity for long periods and acts as though the current still remained. Magnetic light control might be likened to the rudder of a ship, which controls the direction of the ship's motion without in any way motivating that motion. It might again be likened to the fulcrum, which extends its power of expression through the motion to a lever without any way acting to motivate and express the motion of that lever. God's still magnetic light is the fulcrum of this creating universe. Electricity is the two-way lever which extends from that fulcrum to give the universe its pulsing heartbeat of simulated life-death sequences. Wherever God's light appears in matter, there stillness centers motion. But there is no motion at that point. The center of gravity in a spherical sun or earth is one locatable point where God's light is. Likewise, the two still centers of north and south spiral vortices are other locatable balancing points of control. Likewise, the shaft which connects all pairs of opposed poles is an extension of stillness from the zero of wave beginnings to the zero of wave amplitudes, and the return of motion to the zero of its beginnings in the stillness of its borning place on its wave axis. This is a universe of light at rest from which two opposed lights of motion appear to manifest the idea which is eternally sealed in the light at rest. Misconception of Energy Failure to recognize that the universal body of moving matter has been created by some power outside of itself has led science to conclude that the energy which created matter is within itself. Even more erroneous is the conclusion that energy is a condition of matter, such as heat. This fallacy has led to the conclusion that the creation will disappear when heat energy runs down. The first and second laws of thermodynamics are built upon this obviously wrong conclusion. The universe will never run down. It is as eternal as the Creator is eternal. The universe of matter in motion is a mind-conceived, mind-creating body. As such, it is as much a product of mind as a pair of shoes, a poem, a symphony, or a tunnel under a mountain is a product of mind which conceived it and motivated the action which produced it as a form body of matter. The poem is not the poet, however, nor is the symphony its composer. In a like sense, the universe is not its own creator. Whatever qualities or attributes there are in any product, whether it be adding machine or a universe, have been extended to that product by their creator to manifest qualities, attributes, and energies which are alone in the creator of that product. Nor is the idea which manifests matter within matter. Idea is never created. Idea is a mind quality. Idea never leaves the omniscient light of mind. Idea is but simulated by matter in motion. Idea never leaves its invisible state to become visible matter. Bodies which manifest idea are made in their image of their creator's Im imaginings. Every creation, whether of God or of man, is an extension of its creator. It is projected from him by a force which is within its creator and not in the projected product. All of the knowledge, energy, and method of creating any product are properties of mind alone. There is no knowledge, energy, life, truth, intelligence, substance, or thought in the motion which matter is.